Praise the Lord. Amen. Do thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Thank God for uh, our Sunday school lesson today. And uh, amen. And I praise the Lord for you. And I hope you're doing well today. Um, our lesson today is holding on to God's promises. It is a great lesson today. And I'm excited about it. Um, holding on to the promises of God. God has made um, uh, many promises to us. And one of the promises coming to mind, you know, is uh, Matthew 6 and 33, where it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Another one of uh, God promises is that God will supply all your uh, need according to his riches and glory. Amen. It is God's will that we cast all our care upon him, for he cared for you. So I thank God for his promises, thank the Lord for his word, for God for his loving us. Our lesson today is coming from the book of Genesis chapter 32 and, and chapter 33. Amen. And our lesson uh, uh, verses there in those chapter in 32 is 24 through 32 and uh, 33 is 1 to 16. And if you could take the time to read uh, chapter 31 through 33, and that will be enlightening to you, and that will uh, uh, give you a great understanding of our lesson today in, uh, about Jacob. And also will tell you about Isaac and uh, Rebecca, Re Rebecca as well, his parents there. So, but anyway, our lesson today, uh, what we want to focus on is holding on to God's promises. Amen. It is God's will, uh, thanks to God, that we cast all our care upon him, for he cared for us. I thank God that he cared for us, and he is our provider. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, the focus verse, one of the focus it has here in our lesson is that I will hold tightly to God and his plan for my life. I will hold tightly to God and his plan for my life. And it also has something written here that says, Truth about God, which I like this very well. I, I really love this one here. It says, God will bless those who seek after him. God will bless those who seek after him. And just a little bit on our lesson before we get into uh, read uh, uh, the scriptures that I want to read for us here in, in Genesis uh, 32, chapter 32. Um, you may recall that... Um, uh, Esau, which is Jacob's brother, Esau sold his birthright to Jacob uh, for a morsel of meal there. Amen. And also, um, at the time that when uh, Isaac was old and his, his eyes was dim, amen, and he, uh, the only way he could tell uh, uh, Esau and Jacob apart was because, because of the, you know, he had to touch them and feel them. You know, uh, Esau was hairy, and, and he knew Esau by his voice and by his smell, okay? Um, also there, in those chapters there, you would see where uh, uh, Isaac was blessing, uh, Isaac blessed uh, Jacob, thinking it, it was Esau, amen? But Jacob also, you know, Jacob sold his birthright, you know? And and so, but then later on, he regretted it, and he felt bad, and and he also he uh, he hated uh, Esau hated Jacob because uh, Jacob had his birthright and all of his blessing. Which uh, uh, if you read that, you would see that uh, uh, Esau pretty well, pretty much brought it up on himself, you know, and he sold his birthright. And in the Bible lets us know there said that he despised his birthright. Amen. And so Jacob uh, ended up with his birthright in uh, his blessing. So then uh, after that, uh, Esau purposed in his heart to slay uh, Jacob af after uh, uh, the morning for his father, you know, after the morning uh, days of his father would be, you know, would be passed by. And so, and then, but his mother, Rebecca, heard that, and then he also, she also, she told Jacob about it, and then um, she had him, and she talked with uh, Isaac about it, and they both blessed uh, Jacob, and, uh, 
and sent him off over to Laman. And so Jacob went on to live with Laman. He stayed there with him for uh, 20 years, actually. And then uh, he um, went there. He, he married uh, 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 Laman daughters, two of them. He wanted Rachel. It's the one he really wanted. And um, he asked uh, uh, Laman about Rachel. And, Rachel, and Laman said, okay, you can have her, you know. But seven years, he, he worked seven years for, for Rachel there. And then at the end of the seven year, he's thinking he was going to get Rachel, but he didn't. He ended up with uh, Leah instead, the oldest daughter. And so, but anyway, uh, so he had to work another seven years. So it was a total of 14 years before he really got Rachel, the one he really loved. So Laman really, so Laman still wouldn't let him go, wouldn't release him, let him go, which God had told um uh, uh, Jacob, that he was going to bring him back there to Bethel. And Bethel, that's the place that Jacob named that place Beth Bethel. Because Jacob there where he had dreamed a dream when he was leaving, headed over to where Laman was, um, which is, um, I believe, his mother brother. Okay. Um, anyway, um, so... When he was dreaming that dream before he went there, got to where Laman, to Laman household, um, he, he saw a ladder. I believe it was angels descending up and down on it, and God was at the top of the ladder. This is what God blessed uh, uh, Jacob there and told him, you know, about all what he had for him, how he was going to be blessed and how he's going to be great, and that he was going to be with him, I believe, also. You know, you know him being the, the son of Abraham, and, 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 and Isaac and his father, which is the seed, you know, uh, was going to go down, come down through Abraham. Abraham, the father of, of faith, you know. And so uh, we also find there, as in reading the story, that Jacob was very humble and that he was meek. And Jacob uh, feared God. Jacob obeyed his parents. He did what his parents said for him to do, and he obeyed the voice of his mom. And also, at the time, he was afraid to do what his mom wanted him to do, was uh, to go before Jacob, uh, before Isaac, there, and receive the blessing instead of Esau. But uh, he thought that he would be cursed. But his mother said, Obey my voice, and the curse would be upon her. So he obeyed his voice. And, and so, so his parents sent him away to Laman. But anyway, after he worked 14 years there, um, uh, for, for, uh, Rachel, and, uh, he, he was getting ready to go. He wanted to go, but Laman still wouldn't let him to leave. So he had to work another six years, uh, uh, for, for callous, you know, for, to receive some cattles, uh, from Laman. And so in everything that he did, and when you read the story, you find that everything that uh, Jacob did, God blessed him. Everything he did, you know, and even when Laman tried to do more to him, didn't treat him right, uh, everything turned out, uh, for it worked out for Jacob good. So here it is. So now Jacob is on his way back. He's on his way back home, traveling back as God has told him we'll bring him back. And so... Uh, I want to read the prayer to you. He was afraid. He was afraid of uh, of Esau. So I want to read this this here that the writers had here uh, in a Sunday school lesson here. The prayer that Jacob prayed, and he says Jacob took the humblest approach he could and walked toward Esau, bound seven times as he went. In his heart, Jacob was praying that Esau would show mercy to him and not judge men. Okay, wow, this is something. In fact, Genesis 32 and 10 through 11, this is what I'm going to read to us now. Share with us the prayer Jacob prayed, and, here, and here's the prayer. He said, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto Thy servant, wow, this is, um, he's, he's um, humbling himself before God here. It says, For well, with my staff I pass over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. We, he, he divided them up because he was getting ready to meet his brother Esau, and he was afraid. And, and he says, Deliver me, he's praying, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me in the mother with the children, 
and Jacob recognized the faith that he was worthy. The fact that he that he was worthy of no mercy whatsoever. So Jacob, Jacob realized he was not like in the flesh. We're not worthy of all the blessing that God bestowed upon him. He was very humble there and meek there. And so and I want to read the rest of some of uh, that in our lesson as it goes down to the chapter there. And okay, and after Jacob had prayed, he had uh, put them into band, and he was left alone. And this is uh, a verse I want to read for our lesson text. And Jacob was left alone, and there, there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go. For the day break it. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Wow. Okay. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, for but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. Wow, that's something. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee. Thy name, and he said, Wherefore is it thou doest ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Penel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Well, this is something I want to look at our focus verse here again. Again, just touch on that. And he said, Let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I will not let thee go. Except thou bless me. Jacob would not let him go. I'm not going to let you go except you bless me. And Jacob asked him his name. And, and, and he said, uh, no, and he asked Jacob his name. And he said, Jacob, okay. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. So from now on, he's not going to call his name Jacob. He's going to be Israel. Why? For as a prince thou hast power with God, in with men and have pre prevailed. Amen. This is awesome. So Jacob has prevailed. He had power um, as a prince. He has power, you know, and has prevailed. Has power over man, and Jacob has prevailed. So he's changed his name from Jacob to Israel. And so, um, no, uh, so he went on. I want to just tell you a uh, touch on the end of the story here and I want to uh, uh, for the length of time I want to read a little bit of this here um, where uh, Esau at this point in time Esau has uh, uh, forgave Jacob and he ha has a lot he had also uh, he was coming to meet him with about 400 men and so I want to read a little bit of this here uh, that a writer has for us here it says to Jacob shock Esau ran to, ran to him and fell on his neck. The tears began to flow. Then he braced, they embraced as only brothers can do. Then Jacob made an incredible statement. Nay, I pray thee, if thou have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. Okay. For therefore I have seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God. And thou was pleased with me. So Esau was pleased. All the thought that Esau had uh, about Jacob, about slaying him, that was gone. It was done. He was happy to see him. You know, there was no longer in him at this point in time. So God had gave him favor with Esau there at this time. So God would give you favor. God had, as a friend, he was as a friend with God. And God had given him power with man because Jacob prevailed. So what Jacob did not do, Jacob hold, he was holding on to God and God promised him. God had promised Jacob, had promised Jacob that he was going to bless him. And God, you know, on top of all the blessing that God had did with, with Jacob when he was with Laman over there, and God was going to bless his seed. And, and Jacob, see, this goes on, you might remember the 12 tribes of Israel. So those were J Jacob cheering. So God blessed him tremendously. Not only Jacob, but God blessed his seed. So now, here's a verse that I want to uh, kind of leave with you and you to focus on with us for you and I 
It says in Jeremiah 29 in verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Listen to this. Now I want to read this in, in uh, NIV version for us here. And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord, plan to prosper you and not to harm you, plan to give you hope in the future. God has a plan for you and I, a plan to give us hope, a plan for you and I to prosper, and a plan to give us a future. So, but God wants us to hold on to his promise. We have to be like Jacob. We have to have like the spirit that Jacob had. You know, Jacob had the spirit of faith. Jacob had the spirit of obedience. Jacob had the spirit of ominous. And Jacob had the spirit of meekness. Amen. Amen. So if we have that spirit and hold on to God's promise, see, God will bless us. Amen. He will bless us. Amen. So one other verse here in Jeremiah 29, 13 I want to read this one for us too. And it says, And ye shall seek my face. And no, and ye shall seek me and find me. Amen. And, and when and when ye shall search for me with all your heart. I want to read that again. Make sure we get this one here. This is good. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall seek me with all your heart. So if we seek God with all our heart, amen, we'll find him. He will allow us to find him. He will bless us. And saints of God, what we want to do is hold on and not let go of God's promise here. Just hold on to his promise. Once again, I want to leave, read this one thought that I really like here. So God will bless those who, who seek after him. So God blessed Jacob. Jacob sought God and God blessed, God blessed him. Amen. So hold on to God. Don't give up. Hold on to him. And remember, now it is God's will. Amen. It is his will that we cast all our care upon him for he cared for us. He really does. He cared for us and he wants to bless us. Amen. He will bless us. And remember this other thing here too that happened to Jacob. And all the things that Jacob went through uh, and all the things that came upon him, all the trouble he had to go through to get uh, his wife. Amen. And, and regardless how Laban treated him, it all worked together for his good. And God lets us know that all things work together for good to them that love him, to them who are the called according, uh, uh, according to, uh, according, uh, God are called according to, according to his will. Amen. And he will bless us. Amen. To them that love him. Amen. So, so continue, saints. Hold on to God. Promise. Don't let go. Don't let go. Cause he will bless us. He will bless us. Amen. That's his word. That's his word. And cast all your care upon him for he cared for you. God bless you and have a great day in Jesus. Amen.